Hi, this is Dennis Spaeth, publisher, Cutting Tool Engineering. I'm here in Troy, Michigan at the Seco Tools North American headquarters. I'm here with Jay Ball, product manager, solid milling. And Jay is going to talk about the, uh, why it's important uh, to consider the angle of engagement when optimized roughing. Uh, for instance, is uh, a high angle of engagement uh, a bad thing? It is actually, especially when you're looking at optimized roughing. Like I mentioned in the previous video, these more difficult to machine materials, the duplex stainless steels, the titaniums, those materials have a tendency to work hard. So as your angle of engagement or arc of contact doesn't really matter what you call it, as that increases, as the diameter of the, of the end mill increases when you increase the, the material, that's when your heat starts to build up. And as you start to heat those materials, it starts to change them on a molecular, molecular level, starts to work hard the materials. So if you have a large arc of contact, lots of heat. Whereas if you have a small arc of contact, you have less heat, more controlled tool life, less wear and tear on the machine, and throughout your overall process, you're gonna get more consistent results. What happens when you start to reduce the angle of engagement? When you start to reduce the angle of engagement, this is where that whole principle of optimized roughing comes into play. So by reducing the angle of engagement, you actually reduce the heat, reduce the cutting pressure, which actually in turn puts less load on the spindle and less load on the tool itself. So really, by controlling it, you're actually going to have more consistent surface finishes, more consistent part quality. Instead of more traditional practices where you're taking a large depth of cut and a large step over, there's a lot of heat generated, a lot of heat buildup, tons of cutting pressure on the spindle itself, on the tool, deflection issues, premature tool wear issues like chipping can happen. So with optimized roughing, reducing the arc of contacts, reducing rail engagements is actually going to benefit you in the long run. So, so how does a, a shop get a handle on this, the proper setup for, for optimized roughing? You've really got to look at, like I talked about earlier, the, the machine itself. You've got to look at the look ahead, c the controller. You've got to look at the spindle. You've got to look at the holders. But really, also, you have to take a, into consideration the cutting parameters. So traditional machining practices, when you take the large depth of cuts with the large radial step overs, those are tendency to have a lot lower speeds, a lot lower feed rates, so they're not as efficient. With optimized roughing, when you control the arc of contact, you're actually going to have higher spindle speeds, higher feed rates, and we do understand from the manufacturer's perspective that not all materials are created the same. So what we've done is in our catalogs and our literatures, we've actually developed cutting data for all these uh, high duplex stainlesses, titanium, super alloys. We're giving you all the speeds, feeds, depth of cut, radial step overs, really to try to take all the guesswork out of what parameters do I use for my specific application. And if somebody has a question about any of that, they can just contact someone here? Yeah, uh, the Seco Tools tech team has a lot of knowledge, firsthand experience actually in optimized roughing. Um, our Seco Technical Sales Organization as well, those guys have been really trained on optimized roughing and how to be most efficient with it. Very familiar with our cutting tools, very familiar with our speeds and feeds and our parameters. So yeah, if, if a customer has a question on, hey, I've got my tool, now what cutting data do I need? That's when Seco Tools technical support can really be helpful to the customer. 